Sometime mid last year, I saw the Lenovo Yoga C930 in person, and I thought it was a pretty cool laptop, particularly the speaker grill on the hinge. Now, I wasn't able to play any loud music off of it because I was in a public space and I didn't want to annoy everyone, but even at low volumes, it sounded pretty good. It was also built quite well and it had a good looking display, so just from its exterior alone, I thought it was a pretty nice laptop, but I never ended up reviewing it for some reason. And then a little bit later, I got a comment asking for a C930 review. So today, I've got the updated model, the Yoga C940. Now, if you want to skip to any particular part of this video, you can jump to these timestamps on screen. But otherwise, let's talk about the build of this device. It's made entirely out of aluminum, but I don't think it's an anodized finish. It kind of looks like anodization, but it doesn't feel cold to the touch in the morning like my MacBook or my other keyboards. But of all the painted aluminum laptops that I've felt, this is among one of the nicer feeling finishes. Structural rigidity is excellent. There's very little flex on the screen and on the keyboard deck. The hinge is at one hand open up until about 90 degrees, but there's quite a bit of screen wobble, which is especially noticeable if you have any reflections on the gloss coated screen. Now recently, I've looked at a couple of Lenovo's laptops on their website, and one thing that I've noticed is all their laptop displays have gotten brighter. My unit is running the base 1080p touchscreen, which they claim is rated for 400 nits, but I measured 316 nits on my particular unit, which seems to be consistent with other reviews. Uh, that's kind of a big difference. Contrast is excellent, but the color gamut and color accuracy are not very impressive. They're okay, but they do have a 4K option if you want better color accuracy, higher brightness, and HDR400 support. There's also this tiny little like switch to cover up the webcam if you care about webcam privacy, which seems to be especially relevant these past few months. Um, one other miscellaneous thing that I want to mention, this is with the included pen. I'm not an artist, so I can't tell you if it's any good for drawing or how it compares to other pens on the market, but it's not very comfortable. I find it a bit too thin and short, so I can't really like rest the pen on the knuckle of my index finger. I do like that it's included, but yeah, I feel like they could improve the ergonomics for the next revision. The speakers on this are pretty interesting, and it's actually the main reason why I was even interested in this in the first place. The hinge houses double-sided speaker grills that handle mostly mid-range and treble, with two bottom-firing drivers that handle the bass response, and this thing sounds really good. They're loud, it's got a solid amount of bass with excellent detail and clarity from the hinge. They're roughly on par with the Surface Laptop 3 from my memory, but not quite as good as the MacBook Pro. The MacBook handles vocals very naturally, whereas this just cranks up the mid-range and the treble. Having the speakers on the hinge also makes it sound good in just about any position, particularly in standing mode if you're drawing on it. It's got a really nice keyboard with the exception of the short key travel. So everything else on it is really nice and I'm able to hit 110 words per minute so it doesn't impact performance in any way. It's got a great layout. It's not very tactile, but you can still tell when you've activated a switch and it's also weighted perfectly, not too light, not too heavy, but the short key travel means it's not particularly comfortable to type on. Uh, there's also a fingerprint sensor located on the bottom right of the keyboard. The trackpad on this is pretty good. The only area it's lacking in is tracking accuracy when you're making very small movements, but overall tracking is accurate. The acceleration curve is good, but it's like 5% off compared to the best Windows trackpads that I've used. It's also using a smooth glass surface and it's sized just about perfectly for my hands. I mean, it's a 14 inch laptop, so you have a bit more surface area to work with. The button clicks are kind of loud, which you may or may not care about. The trade-off here is that quiet trackpads are generally softer and trackpads with a sharp tactile feedback, like this one, are generally quite loud. On the left, you have a USB-A port, two Thunderbolt 3s, and a headphone jack. Uh, that's it. Kind of strange that the right side is totally clean, minus the power button, but I guess that's the way they went with this. Okay, so far, it's looking pretty good. But one thing that I don't really like with this is that the upgradability is pretty bad. To get inside, you need to peel off the rubber feet, and the only thing that's upgradable is the SSD. Everything else is soldered on, including the Wi-Fi card and the RAM. The thermals are pretty good. I mean, there's two fans inside, which you don't normally see on low-power CPUs with integrated graphics. 
But if you need high performance, the 15 inch models come with the 45 watt 6 core CPUs and a GTX 1650. But I've never reviewed it before, so I can't tell you whether or not the keyboard and the trackpad and like everything else with a laptop remains the same. I just know that it has faster hardware and that it could potentially hit the battery life pretty hard. Speaking of battery, they claim 15 hours with the 1080p model, but I'm getting closer to 10 hours with light use and screen brightness at 90% which is still really good. And if you plan on keeping your laptop for like three to five years, later down the line when your battery degrades, you're still gonna get a full eight hour workday from this battery. I don't have a ton of experience with two-in-one devices, so I don't have any other 14 inch convertible laptops to compare against. I've only ever used 13 and 15 inch convertibles before, but if we look at this thing in a vacuum, like just by itself, no comparison to any other device, I think it's a really nice convertible laptop. So what the C930 offers is a 14 inch convertible laptop where most other ones are either 13 or 15 inch, a really nice looking screen, great speakers and excellent battery life. Those three things stand out as being particularly good on this, even compared to regular non-convertible laptops. Now, I don't know if it's the best value, but I don't have many complaints with this. And if it's something that you were already considering, yeah, I think you'll enjoy using this device. All right, that's the end of this video. Huge thanks if you watched till the very end and I'll see you guys next time.